many choices did you make today? What did you have for breakfast? Eggs, were they scrambled? Pancakes, waffles. What about going in your closet? What did you pick out to wear this morning? Was it dressy, casual? How did you get here to the venue? Did you drive, Uber? Where did you park? Finally, where are you sitting? Front row, back row, in the middle. These are choices. I've read that the average person makes 35,000 choices every day. I don't know about you guys, I just gave you 10 choices and I'm tired already. <laughs> but those choices are what make us who we are and what we do. I recently returned from a funeral, the tragic death of my niece. So many emotions in four short days. Devastation for the loss of a beautiful young soul. Joy to laugh and think of a memory and see people that you've not seen in so many years. The sadness just to know the healing and everything that's coming in the months and the years ahead. But let me tell you a little bit about my niece because she is awesome. She did a lot in her 26 young, young, young years. She could play any musical instrument. She could draw the most breathtaking pictures. And she's had the singing voice of an angel. She was funny. She was beautiful. She was talented. And I tell you, she would step on the box, around the box, on top of the box. And if you got mad, or she made you mad, she might throw that box at you. But that's who she was. She made choices. She made choices and she lived an extraordinary short life because of her choices. During the viewing, there were long tables of her memorabilia. And it was her musical instruments, her artwork, her writings, and we could truly see who she was in all of her stuff. She had a big heart. She put other people first. But unfortunately, it was her heart that failed her in the end. But this is life. It's short, it's precious, it's unpredictable. I was very lucky in the fall of 2020 to be part of a learning cohort. We would spend time studying in our study halls. I mean, we were in the pandemic. So we were all virtual, which you guys all know that virtual, Zoom, all that stuff. But we stuck together for about six months and we helped each other to succeed. We would talk about all kinds of things, what's going on in our personal and professional lives. And we would also just encourage each other to get over that hurdle. If you didn't feel like doing something, you didn't want to study, we were always there for each other. So here we are two years later, we're still meeting. We still have a weekly happy hour, monthly happy hour. And they're like my village. They help me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. They give me advice. We're all there for each other. One of the things we always talked about was parenting. You know, parenting during COVID. And that was always something to talk about. And I would talk about my son my son. And one thing I remember, parenting is all about choices. Just remember that. It's all about choices. Dealing with my son as a single mom from a young age, I would always tell him, you have got to make wise choices because every action has a consequence. So he knows this. And he's watched me. He's watched others learn this. He's got it in his head. So there's an, an example. Here's an example. He had an assignment due, a video project. He had worked on it for months. He went out, he filmed, he did editing, he did all these great things. It's the morning of when he's supposed to turn it in. And I hear, oh no, oh no, 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 oh my god, no, no, no and a few other words not safe for this TED talk. 
So I go in his room. Mind you, it's four in the morning. And he's pacing. He's pacing back and forth in his room. And he's like, oh my God, I, I can't, I can't. And, and I said, what's going on? He said, I've lost everything, everything. It's all gone. Oh, OK. Now, his name means little fiery one. He lives up to that name sometimes. In fact, he kind of looked like the Incredible Hulk. So I'm standing on the other side of the room safely, away from him. And I'm like, come on, let's calm down. We can put it back together. We can figure out what we need to do. Mom, did you, just, did you not just hear me? I have lost everything. So I'm like, oh, OK, fine, 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 fine. OK, we've got to try a different choice here. So I said, OK, I will make you breakfast. Come on down. We'll, we'll fix this. So he did, because he knew in that moment he cannot sit there and be mad about losing everything. He had to get that assignment done, and so he made that choice to get it together, come on down for breakfast, and he did that, and uh, he got an A on his project. So that was good. But again, it's all about choices, and we sometimes forget in this new era that when we're bombarded with so many things, we think we don't have a choice. But guess what? We do. How are we reacting to things? In that moment, you have the choice of how you're going to react. And it's going to be determined if you have a good, bad, or extraordinary day by your choices. So for me, I've made some great choices. And I've made some not so great choices. This is what we do. This is what makes us who we are. So for me, I use the acronym CHOICE, C-H-O-I-C-E. And I'm going to break it down for you. So C. C is for check yourself. You woke up this morning? Check. You're here? Check. I try to find something to be positive about every morning. I have a dog. She's the cutest little thing. She does this little downward dog stretch. Any of you that have dogs, you've seen it in the morning? So she does this stretch, and it just makes me smile. And I get out the bed, and I'm like, OK, I'm happy about that. So that's the check, OK? Check yourself. H, help others. How can you make one person's day better today? It doesn't have to be a grand gesture. It can be as something as simple as picking up the phone and having a conversation. It can be something as simple as listening. Somebody's venting. You don't know what people are going through every day. Sometimes you just need to stop and listen. This is what we did in our cohort. If somebody needed to talk, we were there for each other. Oh, open your mind. Open your mind. Try something new. Take a different way to work. Take your dog around the block a different way. Be open to new possibilities, because you never know how it might change your life. I, I is in the moment, here and now. Not in the past, as my grandma used to say, because even God can't change the past. And not in the future, because we're not promised tomorrow. Only here and now. This moment in this room, will never happen again. C, control your thoughts. Be kind to yourself. Be kind and not say the negative talk. We all have it in our heads. When I hear that and I'm, I've got to deal with something or a choice, I try to use positive affirmations. Controlling your thoughts. And you have to make sure you watch what goes in your mind. Because what you consume, consumes you. Think about that. What you consume. So what's coming in is what's going to consume you. So watch what's coming in. Finally, E. E is for excitement. I am a happy person. Anybody who knows me knows this. I'm a happy person. I've always got a smile on my face. I have many, many things to be grateful for. Life hasn't always been kind, but I find something every day. Grateful, passion, excitement. 
life, love, my son being back in college, yes. So that's, that's what works for me, making that choice every day, putting those concepts together. It can help you to understand what you've done and where you're going. So I'm going to say, when you're faced with 35,000 plus choices every day, make that choice 